This comes from the subconscious and the uh, nada, this type of nada is different. It's not energetic at all. Yeah, it's musical. Yeah. The nada or the sound of the absolute energy manifests differently. During samadhi, it's more energetic or electrical. Like you can hear the sound of the electricity flowing through the body, particularly the brain. Depending on the level of uh, samadhi or the intensity, for example, if it's cranial, meaning the cerebrospinal fluid is actively flowing through the sutures of the skull, the samadhi we hear is buzzing. Yeah, not ringing, buzzing, and um, I'd say uh, rhythmic. Uh, like um, you're listening to the sound of a machine inside the, the brain. Like that. Yeah. It's like hearing the high uh, frequency uh, ohm. The high pitch uh, ohm. Yeah. So, because that is the sound of the many billions, if there are billions of neurons there firing electrical impulses. And we can hear it, especially after the Samadhi. Now, it will linger for many minutes to drain the uh, nada out, we need to chant it. I do my chanting after the Samadhi to drain, release you know, the excess electricity flowing through you know, the brain. Now. After that experience, the Kundalini exits the ground of the Hindu Sashara Sakra. The next stage is it will be sucked in. The consciousness will be sucked in back inside the heart. Now, this is a deeper samadhi when uh, the consciousness you know, gets back into the body through the heart chakra. And then, then you will hear deep humming vibration. Really, this is the core of the OM, and while it's happening, you're not breathing, and your heart is not beating too. Now, it's um, really deep and intense, Samadhi, this one. Um, it's like uh, hearing the low humming OM. OM. It's a never-ending OM, actually. All right, now. There's also this samadhi where it's more on the hips, the pelvis. Yes, the kundalini energy can flow out of the hips. And the samadhi or the nada we hear of, uh, from that experience is more of like flowing, gushing. Yeah. And the, the tone is um, not too high, not too low, moderate. And it's flowing. Like that. And it, it, it has this... Um, um, fluctuation, but it's not uh, too sudden or too sharp. It's really like flowing, like gushing, because the pelvis uh, is made up of the water element, most of uh, the element you know, of water flowing there. Yeah. So all of this uh, byproduct of the energy channeling technique. Yeah, of the Hatha Yoga, the Pranayama, Mudras, and of course the uh, meditation, uh, listening to the Nada. All right. But this Nada that occurs during Samadhi is different from the Nada which happens uh, all the time. Uh, the uh, sound of the Manipura Chakra. The Manipura Chakra is high and ringing. <laughs> like you're alone in the forest, crickets. Uh, so this is also a nada, but it is not uh, during samadhi. Yeah, so the, nada, the, the Manipura nada is something which is always there, yeah, present. If you uh, listen to it, yeah, it's there. If you're not listening to it, it's not there. Yeah, so this I like the type of nada. The Manipura nada, the, the high ringing frequency, normally occurs and it's common for people who do uh, or practice Hatha Yoga. Now, however, there's another type of nada which comes from the subconscious. Yeah. And this type of nada occurs even for people or to people who do not have any yoga experience at all. And this is the grace, really. Um, this comes from the subconscious. And the uh, nada, this type of nada is different. It's not energetic at all. Yeah. It's musical. Yeah. 
and it's organic it's spontaneous it's um, something which comes from nowhere it doesn't come from the brain so the nada from the energetic practices somebody comes from the brain but this nada comes from outside but it's not made by any external uh, I'd say instrument yeah so the first time I experienced it, this type of nada I wasn't doing any yoga at all I was in the kitchen preparing my lunch and it appeared it occurred this angelic music like there's the choir uh, singing and uh, an orchestra playing and many different musical instruments I could recall hearing the flute and other wind instrument string instrument the drums um, and all of this they blend so beautifully together and like there's an angel you know, the choir singing Ooh, like, yeah, it's, it's it's melodic yeah angelic uh, melody and I haven't heard that music before and I look around you know, the house was quiet I was alone and yes it just appeared close to the right hemisphere of the brain it lingered there for quite some time actually I keep listening I keep looking around where it's coming from but yeah it's coming from nowhere it just appeared yeah and then it disappeared yeah so that type of nada comes from the subconscious actually another type of nada which comes from the subconscious is the chime the bell all right and this nada yeah sounds very similar to this yeah and it goes in uh, equal intervals yeah rhythmic intervals really the sound of the bell um, I've heard as well a higher uh, pitch like this yes when it happened to me I didn't have any of this external tools actually I didn't even know uh, about nada at all I didn't know about kundalini at all I wasn't doing yoga when that particular nada appeared um, I was lying down and I heard the chime the bell I think I was reading or I was just relaxing and it appeared also in the right hemisphere of the brain yeah so the subconscious nada normally occurs yeah from my experience only my right side could hear it yeah the left side yeah it's uh, you can hear it but it's not coming from there it's the right like it's coming from the right part of the the head the outside and it goes from the outside enters the right hemisphere of the brain it's like your right brain could hear it whereas the energetic nada those coming from the energetic of uh, practices your whole cranial cavity can hear it both ears can hear it inside the brain but the subconscious nada only the right hemisphere of the brain is able to experience it all right now there's also the subconscious nada which are um narrative in nature like voice talking you know to you yeah, and some uh, people when they close their eyes they could see image yeah um, and uh, the images or the people or, or the i say uh, the uh, the source of the instruction the voice talks to them like giving them narratives or instructions or uh, a glimpse of the future you now clairvoyance and you know, I might say premonitions so these types of nada especially the narrative ones the voices should be channeled you know properly yeah because people who receive this normally um, experience them spontaneously and some of them most of them actually do not practice yoga at all it just happened it's grace really i truly really believe that um we we tackle this spiritual journey from where we left off the last time and our subconscious you know, retains you know, the information of our past experiences so these people you know, they're the gifted ones they are continuing their journey you know, from where they left off yeah and it happens to them um, randomly 
it occurs to them because their subconscious remembers it now if that person is not for example guided properly on how to channelize and how to direct the energy back to the physical body because this would have to be processed in the body so it becomes a healing energy not only a spiritual or uh, an astral or psychic energy it has to be channeled back to the body so we can make use of that now if the that person experiencing the grace or the organic nada the subconscious nada is not aware or how to channelize the energy it could cause uh, conflict you know, psychological mental or even psychiatric psychiatric issues yeah you just imagine yeah you're doing nothing and you hear someone talking to you yeah and you don't know what to do about that the musical nada yeah, the bell the beautiful angelic music yes it's beautiful but there are nadas which are yeah uh, a bit uh, delicate like the narratives um some people also see yeah when it's when the nada is musical when the nada is uh i say melodic the image of the nada is like radiance and colors when you close your eyes hovering over your forehead now by the way going back to the energetic nada when the nada uh, comes from the anahata yeah the image of the energy is pitch black yeah what's in the cranial cavity it's radiance colors but in the heart it's pitch black with nothing there they're really dark 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 black empty space but your eyes could be see. like you're looking inside your heart you're looking inside the brain all black but when the samadhi is in the brain it's a bit uh i say colorful radiance blinking light flashing lights now Another which occurs, for example, for the people who receive the narratives or verbal instructions or voices, they see people. Yeah, some see uh, um, characters. Yeah, um, and some of this could be um, uh, not pleasing to the eyes. Yeah, um, so it's really important that um, they are guided according accordingly and properly on how to rechannel yeah, the manifestation of the nada to their bodies because the nada when it goes back to the body becomes sensation yeah so this is like the electricity and this could yeah, serve us yeah for health for wellness for well-being and this could be shared and uh, i say transferred to others yeah so the hatha yoga uh, method is a powerful and helpful way for us to rechannel the grace yeah, from grace to the body yeah for people who are energetically sensitive to begin with yeah so they can it's like they um go back yeah to the process that they've been through in their past it's just that yeah they don't have to really tackle the advanced complex elements of hatha yoga for them to understand the link yeah, between the body, the energy, and the spirit. Yeah, so they can progress to the higher callings of meditation. But for most of us, for general practitioners, we always start low. I started really low. So we always start, it's, it's good to start with the body because this is the more, um, I'd say, easy to understand. You know, when the body is strong, the energy can flow inside. We regulate the flow of the breath, so we increase our pranic force. And then from there, this nada will manifest because the nada is a byproduct of the energetic forces flowing through our body, the polar are the union of the many different forces there, the positive, the negative energy, so that the sushum na the middle channel opens up and this produces the nada actually the many nada we encounter during meditation so yes um so both ways we need to learn how to yeah if for example you come from the body we need to learn how to uh, transcend the energetic manifestation into the spiritual nada and so we understand where it's actually coming from and from there we share experience of how we detach and untangle our mortal existence or senses from uh, uh, to, from the uh, pure consciousness itself for people now who are high yes yeah, started really high in their life they have to go back so they can understand now the relationship yeah 
and the the link between the spiritual aspect of their experience to the energetic and the physical aspect. Yeah, so you know we understand each other. Yeah, so there's no conflict, there's no misunderstanding, only unity. Like it's just like going back and forth and then, uh, understanding and accepting and learning yeah, how to channelize the energy to the body and the body to the energy and so on and so forth until you're able now to yeah transcend to the higher um, spiritual I say realization samadhi yeah and Hatha yoga is a good way for us to rise yeah from the body to the spirit even this lifetime is possible but we don't um, expect you know we just do our best now if you are gifted already with that spiritual grace then it's good yeah to go back yeah and channelize the spiritual gift to your body so we can yeah translate it to meaningful lessons um lessons and teachings which could be appreciated and utilized and be beneficial for most of us see you next time namaste